Hi guys, welcome back to our second part of our comparison SAM70 vs Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. Before we have a look at the guiding results in a minute, um, I should give you a small introduction into the topic. Um, in the first part we had a look at the specs and at the uh, different features of both mounts. Uh, in this part we will have a look at the guiding performance and we are coming finally to a conclusion which is the better mount. Is it the EQ6R Pro or is it the SEM70? Here we are. Now, finally, the guide comparison. iOptron SEM70 vs Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. When we talk about guiding, um, there's a lot of factors influencing guiding. I don't want to go into details, but uh, you have to consider seeing conditions as well as uh, flex in your mount. There's a lot of reasons um, why your guiding in the evening can't or may probably have some issues. And uh, those issues uh, happen and everybody has it. But uh, on the other side, there's a lot of factors we can influence. So a stable tripod and a good <coughs> guide scope can help you in doing a very nice and smooth guiding. And to analyze your guiding, um, we have a look here. Um, this is something, a typical guide graph you see here. It's uh, in red the deck axis, in blue the RA axis um, of my mount. And you look, they are performing equally in terms of the frequency and uh, the whole pattern looks nice. Um, and also when you look at the scale here, it's everything what happens is almost within plus minus two arc seconds. And uh, this is something I would call it's a good guiding. And also the RMS figures mirror this. You see for the RA axis it's 0.56, for the deck it's 0.59, total is below one arc second. And this is what I call good guiding. So the guide graph is smooth and the scattergram here on the right side, that's all the, the single um, guiding, um, uh, guiding points um, collected in one graph together uh, are almost within the red circle, which is uh, the borderline you defined before. And this is C in this case, I think uh, within one arc second. And so the scattergram shows you also a nice distribution all over the four quadrants. Um, so this mount behaves nice. N now let's have a look at the not so perfect guiding. In this case, um, and that was a used EQ6 non-R, so non-belt driven. Um, I used, I bought it uh, in a used as a used version and uh, it turned out that this was a guide graph and you see uh, the spikes here in the deck axis and when you look at the numbers they are awful they are really really awful peak values are in the hundreds even so that was absolutely unacceptable i sent it to one of our um, 
free service guys here in Germany and they opened the mount and found out that there's a lot of metal splinter inside the bearings and uh, that caused the, the rupture in the guiding and so um, the bearings had to be changed the whole EQ6 had to be cleaned completely cleaned uh, it turned out that the guy who used it before me uh, was drilling holes inside the case here and so um, yeah this is uh, bad luck um, things happen so we know now what is bad guiding what is good guiding now let's have a look at our bows mounts um, guide settings where guide scope as I introduced with the AZ120 analyzed with uh, where the lock files with PHD2 lock viewer and you can also look at the higher frequencies with PAC prep um, file um, uh, viewer and uh, I can only strongly recommend this uh, tool as well when you want to know what's going wrong with your guiding. Um, now let's have a look. First is the Skywatcher. This is a guiding of the Skywatcher before we underwent tuning and uh, the polar alignment error was an acceptable range and the RMS value was not. So when you see um, the total RMS was beyond one and uh, even worse the peak values were in the 10 tenth uh, of arc seconds and that is absolutely something which you can't accept. So you can also see it here on the guide graph yeah the the red line this is the deck axis which behaves somewhat okay um, however the um, RA axis turns out to be very up and down and you see it here on the scale we are talking about plus minus seven to eight arc seconds and you can also see the same here on the scattergram so that mount needed tuning and that was what came out what you see here and don't get uh, upset this is uh, dithering in between we don't measure this when we look at the statistic figures uh, polar alignment was okay so um, when you look now at the tuned version uh, it behaves quite decent and all the ups and downs are gone and we are in the range of two two and a half arc seconds and that's absolutely acceptable and also the scattergram looks much much nicer everything is around more or less one arc second and this is something uh, which means you will have a lot of fun with that mount and it behaves as it should now let's see what the uh, ioptron mount what will happen with that so that is the ioptron guiding before i tuned the mount and again this is uh, with dithering so uh, dithering is not in the statistics um, but what you can see here is already the scale here that's 10 arc seconds that's 15 arc seconds so um, and uh, dithering is in the in the gray the real mount behavior is only in the black areas and um, when you look at the black areas you can see it here ra and deck axis are beyond one arc second and the peak values are even higher so what's going on what's wrong with that mount uh, you can also see it here on the scattergram um, and that was after we tuned the mount so again polar alignment was okay scattergram looks much nicer now much closer to one arc seconds in all four quadrants and um, when you look at the statistics here ra and deck axis are now well in in our range of one arc second so um, peak to peak or peak values were also in an acceptable range so overall after tuning the sam 70 behaved as it should what was going wrong with the eq6r pro we needed tuning because of backlash we had loose gears so the gear mesh didn't didn't come uh, close enough together and uh, worst of it we had a defect uh, ra warm which had to be changed and uh, also the lubricant was very sticky and so we had to change that as well for the ioptron the actions we had to take 
was not so severe like for the AQ6R. However, we had a loose stack axis and that had to be fixed and also the lubricant was changed. And so if you compare now the statistics, the RMS values head to head, you will not find huge differences. So After we have seen the guiding results, um, this is my summary, my conclusion out of this. Um, when you tune those mounts, they perform equally good. That's my understanding and that's my experience. Um, unfortunately, both mounts didn't behave as I expected when they come from the factory. And that is something I would accept for the EQ6R, but I am struggling accepting this for the SEM70 because you know, the price tag is much higher for the 770 compared to the EQ6R. I mean, I could buy almost two units of EQ6 compared to one 770. So my expectation was performance-wise, the 770 should outperform the EQ6R. That was not the case in my experience. I don't know what your experience is. So if you want, write it down in the comments and let us talk about it. Um, but I think um, I'm not the only one who has problems with uh, those mounts in general. Um, most of the mounts, I think, need tuning. Um, otherwise, you lose a lot of uh, photo time and uh, that is not uh, what I could accept. So, final words, SEM70 and EQ6R are equally good but from the touch and feel i would prefer the 770 because yeah it's a little bit nicer okay thanks for joining and uh, see you next time bye